so this is just a quick tutorial on how to create stones uh, and boulders and rocks. Um, there's not a super easy way to do it in Rhino that I know of. I've uh, been looking into ways, but the best way I know is actually to use 3D Studio Max, which is uh, available for free downloads for students. Um, once you launch 3D Studio Max, it's a you know incredibly complicated program. There's lots of parameters and, and abilities in it. Um, we're going to be using three. The first is this is your Create tab here, and we're going to be creating a geosphere. So a geosphere, mm -hmm -hmm. there we go, zoom in on it there. Um, a geosphere is just a kind of a triangulated sphere. Uh, and you can control how many segments uh, this has. We don't need a whole lot for creating stones. So with that in place, I'm going to go to the tab next to the Create tab, which is the Modify tab here. And I'm going to use the Edit Poly Modifier. What that lets me do is control kind of the geometry of this sphere. I'm going to be using the vertexes here. So select all the vertexes, and at the very bottom of this stack here, there's a paint deformation. And if I click push pull, you can see I kind of have a mouse that lets me um, move the geometry of the sphere. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to make um, my brush size larger, so even bigger than that. Um, I created this sphere as an arbitrary size, and I can increase how much it pushes and pulls. And basically, um, I'm going to move around the sphere and work on kind of deforming it. I'm going to try to pull out one side this way, kind of round things out. And you can see it gets pretty um, wonky, right? So I'll just pull these pieces away, and if I hold down Alt, I can actually push geometry in. So maybe uh, not paying attention to the bottom part of the sphere here, but at the top, maybe this is good enough for a rock. Um, so now I'm going to go back up, let's see, and just use my select objects. And if I go to a elevation view here, I'm going to delete the bottom vertices of the sphere. So now we're left with something like that. Um, if I wanted to move push pull again, here I can pull out the side. Right now I can still kind of see that it had like a spherical bottom, which is weird for a rock. So I'll, I'll deform that. There we go. Um, go back up. I'll select all of the faces, clicking this bit here and control A. I have all the faces here. Uh, I'm going to go turbo smooth. I'm up in the modifier menu again, and I'm going to use turbo smooth. I can type it in turbo smooth, which smooths the rock out. I can do more than one iteration if I wanted to get a really smooth rock, but you can see I added a lot of faces to the geometry. And then I'm going to add an um, optimize modifier. So here I'm going to type optimize, um, didn't get it, optimize. So what that does is it merges faces that are fairly close to one another. You can see that no longer, if we turn this off, we have lots of faces, fewer faces. And then I can say, you know, I can increase the threshold and make this a little lumpier. Um, all right, so that's the rock. That's how I model the irregular geometry very quickly. I'm going to file export, and on my desktop I have a thing called stone, and I'll call this rock one. I'll save it. Um, it's just an FBX file, which is pretty easy to work with. I'm going to launch Rhino. Um, the other thing we're going to need is a, a texture for this stone. Um, so I'm going to use, let's say, small object feet. It's just one rock. And this is launching here in a second. I'm going to close these animation toolbars. We don't need those. I'm going to import my rock. So on the desktop, I have my stone, and there's my FBX. Um, I'm not going to scale it. Zoom extents to, to see the whole rock. Um, it's, uh, it's strangely rotated, so if I say uh, with the actually with the gumball turned on here it's very easy I'll just grab this axis and rotate it uh, 90 degrees you can see it there um, it's less smooth than it was hmm did I not have it exported correct no the optimize was on it's less smooth than it was in um, 3d studio max so using the smooth command 
in Rhino should be able to smooth it in X, Y, and Z. Um, and I'll say 0.2. And I've got a little bit smoother objects. But I'm going to have to create a texture to texture this rock. And to do that, um, I'm going to use a program called Crazy Bump. Uh, Crazy Bump's available for free. And I'm going to open a photograph, which I downloaded from Google. It's just a stone texture on my desktop. I have stone. It's this stone texture here. And what this does is it creates all of the maps that I could use. Um, so I can see, like, you know, do I want deep shadows? I have to pick between these two of these. This one seems to be protruding. This one seems to be recessed. I'll pr take this one. And it gives me a preview of what that rock texture is like. Um, I'm going to turn on the diffuse map, too. Uh, ambient occlusion, and if I go to something uh, like a box, uh, I can edit all of these elements. So the displacement, maybe I don't want the map to be as pitted like this, so I can turn down its intensity. Um, actually, I just flipped it the other way and reduce its detail. Um, and specular, I can turn down how shiny the rock is here, so it's much more flat. Uh, and then I can save all of these maps out. So if I say save all textures, again, back to my desktop on the stone, I, uh, I'm going to save them as uh, JPEGs. And we'll go stone underscore save. So in Rhino, pretty conventional, we're going to create a new V-Ray material. Create new V-Ray material standard, call it rock. Uh, I'm going to load a diffuse map here. Uh, jump back to the desktop, stone. Uh, this is the diffuse map. Okay. And with that, I'm going to add a bump map. Uh, the bump map is a bitmap, and it's my displacement map here. I'm not actually going to displace the geometry. I'm just going to use a bump map. But I'm going to add what's uh, the UV information here using my normal map. So UV, W, color. Uh, I'll go get a bitmap. I'm going to use this normal map, which will move the bump map in a different direction. Say OK. I can preview this here, and I can see I have you know pretty good stone. Right-click, add reflection. Up here, I'm going to replace my friend soul with a bitmap, and my bitmap is the specular map here. We'll say OK, and you can see right now it's going to be an incredibly shiny rock. That's not what I want. Um, so looking at these settings, make sure there's nothing we need to change. Now that looks good. I'm going to reduce my reflection to 0.5 and my highlights. Um, highlights can be fine, 0.65. My reflective value, though, is point maybe 0.25. And now I have a little bit of glossiness on the rock. Uh, maybe it's picking up some of the metal owl elements. If I lower this further, and I can actually go in and lower this one further and get something that's not very reflective, I'm going to increase my highlights so that when light's hitting various particular portions of it, um, we'll see it well. Look, jump back up here. There we go. So with this rock, I'm going to apply my material. I'm going to go into rendered mode, and you can see it's very highly textured. So I'm going to set a texture map that is surface mapped, and at the bottom of my surface wrap, I'm going to say maybe 0.01 by 0.01 by 0.01. So there's not a lot of reflections at all. Um, here in the preview, it looks very, very shiny. Um, but I'm going to do a quick render. I can actually see the seams, which I'm not too happy about here. So let me see if I go to 0 .005, 0 .005, 0 0.005. Um That's better. There's still a seam here, but um, it's kind of it. The texture is large enough that we're kind of hiding that. Um, so I'll get a view of the rock that I want. I'm going to change my camera to be 34 millimeters. Uh, 34, not 3,400, and I'll do a quick render. Um, and there you go. Within 10 minutes, that's how you create a custom rock in uh, 3 Studio Max, Crazy Bump, and V-Ray for Rhino. Hope that helps.